Hello everybody and welcome to Toy Two to You Curator's Corner episode number 30. My name's Sean Brosnan, I'm a curator at Toy Two Otago Settlers Museum here in Dunedin. I make these little videos about early Dunedin history for our visitors who can't necessarily come to the museum. Now way back in the very first episode of Curator's Corner, the one about this first historic photograph of central Dunedin from 1857, I pointed out this group of three houses on the hillside to the south of Princess Street known as Little Paisley. That name takes us right back to 1848 and the arrival of the first ships, with the Philip Lang bringing a group of four families who were all from Paisley near Glasgow. That cluster was made up of Francis and Margaret Marshall with seven children, John and Elizabeth Barr with six children, James and Isabella Patrick with three children, and Robert and Margaret Gillies with four children, though we don't seem to have portraits of them. Altogether, that makes 28 people, adults, teenagers, and children. And you can see how that would make up a sizable cluster in a population in the embryonic settlement of only a couple of hundred people. The four cottages were in a line running south to north, the Marshalls, the Bars, the Patricks, and the Gillies, an outpost of the main village that unsurprisingly became known as Little Paisley. This version of a painting by Edward Abbott, one of Kettle's survey party, shows a view from Little Paisley towards Dunedin in 1849, depicting a rather idealised version of what Dunedin would have looked like at that early point. Now, if we could spin that view around to look at Little Paisley itself, the reality would have been a lot humbler for the families there, especially for the men and boys who at this stage were scratching out a living as day labourers, mostly working for Thomas Burns, according to diary entries of his, at least at the beginning. Whereas back in Scotland, their life had been very different. Those men had been skilled tradesmen, handloom weavers. Paisley, the original in Scotland that is, had long been associated with textile production and especially the manufacture of shawls, therefore known as Paisley shawls, that had become a standard item of wear for ordinary Scottish women by the mid-19th century. We've got lots of examples in the Toy Two collection that belonged to pioneer Otago women. Their distinctive patterns, knockoffs in fact of shawl designs from India and further back with origins in Persia, have endured in fashion right through to the present as Paisley. That was big among pop stars and hippies when I was growing up in the 1960s, and Paisley is still a favourite for many that has the occasional renewed burst in the fashion spotlight. Back in the 1840s, however, the increasing mechanisation of weaving in Scotland going through the Industrial Revolution had made loads and loads of the old handloom weavers redundant. Lots of them immigrated from Paisley and similar towns all around Scotland, and quite a few of them came here to Otago, including this sprinkling on the Philip Lang. They were all starting over in New Zealand, and little Paisley in Dunedin was the launch pad for this group for their new life. And one by one, as they scraped together enough money to buy their own plots of lands, they moved off the hill and away all except for John Barr. As well as a stint as Dunedin's first jailer and another in charge of the pound, he became Captain Cargill's right-hand man and totally dedicated to his service. When his boss built a new home just near Little Paisley at Hillside, the focus of episode 15 of this series, Barr opted to remain right where he had started and developed his original furry into a decent wooden cottage, which he called Mavis Bank. Here it is in an undated photo with John Barr himself seated at centre and some of the female members of the family fashionably attired. And here's another hand-coloured version of the same image and a second hand-coloured photograph from a different angle. Now quite apart from its interest as a pioneer's launch pad, Mavis Bank in Little Paisley has another point of significance. For it was here on a handloom that John Barr had commissioned a local cabinet maker, William Willocks, to build for him that Barr wove the very first cloth to be manufactured in Dunedin in early 1853. We actually have two shuttles from that loom in the Toy Two collection. And we can see here Barr's advertisement in the Otago Witness in January 1853 touting his forthcoming production after the harvest, when he's prepared to take orders. James Barr, the pioneer historian, who's no relation as far as I can work out, writes in his 1879 history of the first decade of settlement that... The tweeds which he produced were very much liked and pronounced to be the very article of wear that was suitable to the place. But encouragement failed 
and it took 20 years for Otago to get up the requisite patriotism for the support of a manufactory. Another account describes Bar at work, his feet shifting regularly the treadles, his hands moving the beam and plying the shuttle, his eye watching for any flaw in the yarn, and his tongue detailing a yarn of another sort. The visitor was both instructed and amused. In 1858, however, the area around Little Paisley was selected to become the site for Dunedin's second cemetery. Barr promptly offered to take on the role of sexton and won the job. It would have been a short commute. John and his wife Elizabeth remained at Little Paisley until his death in 1873. When they died, they were both buried alongside Captain Cargill, not far from their original cottage. Their son William, the first mayor of Mornington, did even better. He is buried on the exact spot, his headstone, where the family cottage's hearthstone had been. So that's the story of Little Paisley, a place name that has faded away in use, but which gives a clue to the motivation for emigrating for some of our earlier settlers. So I hope you enjoyed that story. If you did, you might like to subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon to be notified of future episodes.